Welcome back to the May the Madness YouTube channel. This is Jonathan here to break down the news as Trey Murphy has decided to stay in the NBA draft. Um, I think it was a decision that you know was starting to look more and more uh, realistic. Was looking you know more and more like it would be the case. Uh, Trey Murphy was kind of somewhat rising up draft boards. He was like originally coming in probably you know, to this draft cycle, maybe a second round guy, you know, most probably wouldn't have even anticipated he'd be drafted. You know, the more and more pe teams started to watch his tape, the more and more, you know, they look at the skill set, what he can do NBA wise as, you know, being a true three and D, you know, I think for what, what an ideal role is, uh, he's six, nine, He's a good defender uh, and a great shooter, and that's a perfect spot in the NBA. It's, you know, I kind of, you know, compare him to a Desmond Bain. He can, he's someone that can come in, he can shoot uh, from three at high level. That's certainly much need. Uh, he can get hot. We saw first game of the year, I think he had like six threes or something like that. So, I mean, you look at an elite three-point shooter, that's a perfect need. Uh, some team is going to, I think, late in the first round, walk away with a great addition in Trey Murphy. So it should be no surprise to see him heading to the NBA. As for Virginia, it leaves them in a kind of tough spot. I think Kia Clark is, you know, we know who he is. He's, you know, tough defender, not elite defender, mostly because of his size. He's a good passer, not an elite passer. He can score, but not an elite scorer. He just is kind of what he is. Uh, obviously 5'9", but you know we know what he can do. I think Reese Beekman is someone that is in for a big breakout season. He's, I think, a good, you know, sure. I would say, you know, he's in for a breakout season. I could see, you know, maybe a Kyle Guy or Ty Jerome type jump. Carson McCorkle is still on the team. I think he's someone they anticipate him making a big time jump. They also have in freshman Tyan Murphy, four-star uh, recruit. I don't think he's going to come in and be a world beater, but he can add some shooting. So you add shooting, you know, Carson McCorkle, Tyan Murphy, those are good shooters. You also, you know, you lose Trey Murphy, you also add in Arbon Franklin. He's, I think, someone that can, you know, come in. He's a bigger guard. He's 6'4". Uh, I think he can play the three. So you're going to roll out probably K.H. Clark, Reese Beekman, Arbon Franklin, one through three. They also had NJ and Gardner, not necessarily a shooter, uh, but he's someone that, you know, you look at, he can play the four for you. He can, you know, be a good defender. He's a good scorer as well. Uh, and so I think Jay and Gardner can, he's probably going to lead the team in scoring hang in this season. That's, you know, is what it is. I don't think he's a late scorer. I think he's, you know, maybe like a 12 to 14 point per game type guy. But, you know, that is what you get. Uh, and yeah, I think certainly he's someone that you know can come in and lead the team in scoring. Then you go to the five position and Francesco Cavaro, who we've kind of waited for a little while to see what he can do. Uh, Jay Huff is you know heading pro. Justin McCoy, of course, of course transferred to North Carolina. That leaves room for Francesco Cavaro. Can he take that big breakout season? Can he be like Jay Huff? Can be like like junior year J Huff. That would be certainly big. Uh, you know they lose Tomas Walton, Sam Hauser, J Huff, now Trey Murphy, Casey Marcel, Jabor, Jabri Abdul Rahim. That leaves you know some room for players to step up. I think Virginia early in the season is going to struggle. Um, you know if they play San Francisco, wouldn't be surprised to see them lose to San Francisco. Uh, is kind of how it is, but I think they'll get better throughout the season. We know Tony Bennett; he is an elite coach. He will get the best out of his team. They will be playing better in ACC play, uh, and we'll of course see about the NCAA tournament. But you know, looking at this Virginia team, I think you know early in the season, have low expectations. Have them, you know, by week three of the AP poll, they will not be in it. I will guarantee that. I think they'll lose a couple games early in the season. I think they'll be, you know, start to pick it up towards the ACC play. I think, you know, you're looking at a team, you know, maybe finish top four in the ACC. 
I think they're that's probably their ceiling. I don't think they're going to be on the same level as a Duke or Florida State or even North Carolina, but I think they can finish, you know, maybe fourth in the ACC, contend, you know, have a solid season, make the NCAA tournament, and that's, you know, what the expectations should be. I don't think the expectations should be, you know, too high, but Virginia, it's going to be interesting to see. They're going to need, you know, big seasons from a couple breakout candidates. If they can get that, you know, this is, the team could be a consistent top 25 team, could maybe even, you know, crack the top 25, top 20, top 15, you know, we'll kind of see about that. But as for now, I will be keeping a little bit of low expectations on them. Thanks again for tuning in to Making Madness on YouTube and make sure to subscribe. We'll be back next time.